Thunderball once again pits Bond James Bond against Spectre, the evil organization responsible for the events of Dr. No and From Russia With Love. The organization makes good on the extortion portion of their name when they steal an atomic bomb from NATO and threaten to destroy a major western city if the NATO governments refuse to hand over a sh ton of money. When the entirety of MI6 is tasked with finding the bomb, Bond follows a lead to NASA where he has a run-in with Emilio Lar number two of Spectre, and the man responsible for the crime. Going to our oddly aquatic buddy, McCurdy, what do you have for us on the historical end of things? <laughs> I didn't think that gag was gonna last long enough. Holy <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it on the whole time. No, no. <laughs> You yes, should have done this, this is... whole thing from a pool. Just should have. That would have been great. <laughs> this yeah. is the... So, gentlemen, of course, this is when things get aquatic and we do a lots of underwater visuals and all this stuff. Was that a combo of iconic and aquatic? Aquatic? <laughs> aquatic. Did you mean the to I do that? <laughs> we should say the aquatic episode of the Bond yeah. franchise, Thunderball. <laughs> yeah, from here on, if you utter the word iconic, you drink. Uh, <laughs> all right, kids, let's get into it. So typically, we get into all the cast and crew behind the scenes stories, but today I'm gonna set all that aside and we're gonna deep dive in, see what I did there, into the behind the scenes tale that is the legal battle over Thunderball. So let's begin. So we set our story way back when to 1958. And at this point, Ian Fleming has made a handful of the Bond novels. Uh, Casino Royale has been adapted for television. He's doing fairly well. He's doing very well for himself. And then one of Fleming's friends comes to him and says, hey, you know what would be great? What if there was a James Bond movie? Fleming, of course, says, by Jove, it would be great. Pip, pip, let's do it. So, of course, him and his friends get together. They start coming up with ideas for a Bond screenplay. And he's quickly introduced to a man who will be maybe the antagonist of all of the Bond franchise, or maybe his own hero in his own story from a certain point of view. And that man is Kevin McClory. He's a specter on the entire franchise. <laughs> yes, I thought I saw a specter at your shoulder. McClory, he was an Irish writer and director. He's made documentaries, he made some films. He wasn't a big deal. Like this guy was, you know, just some average filmmaker. This guy wasn't by any means Steven Spielberg. So him, Ian Fleming, and then he introduced a screenplay writer named Jack Winningham. Uh, the three of them came together and they started coming up with all these ideas, these outlines and stuff. But why is this story so important? Because it sounds like I'm going on about some stupid legal battle. Well, it's because they came up with Spectre and Ernest Blofeld, which, as you guys know, watching these films are two big, important parts of the Bond franchise. And they are both introduced in this book, or I should say the screenplay. So they come up with the screenplay. The screenplay's title is Longitude 78 West. And of course, Fleming's like, that's that title sucks. So what what is the new title? The new title is Thunderball. Uh, much take better. That as, much better. Yeah. But take that as much as you will. But then Fleming makes a fatal flaw when it comes to this whole screenplay business. Instead of it becoming a movie, it doesn't become a movie right away, probably because of financing and all sorts of other reasons. He takes his screenplay and he adapts it into a novel and he titles it Thunderball by Ian Fleming. And he gives a manuscript to his buddies. Say, here, Jack, here, Kevin, here's the manuscript to the new novel I'm going to write. It's called Thunderball. You guys should check it out. See what you think. And of course, they're like, what the f dude? Uh... The three of us came up with this idea. You're you're putting your name on this like we the three of us came up with this idea. You can't just, you know, take our ideas and put it in a in a book and just say, hey, that's you know, that's that and make a bunch of money off of it. So quickly, of course, they sue and they try to prevent the book from being published. And of course, the book does get published anyway, but the legal proceedings still are ongoing. And so much so now it's kind of like 1960, 1961. Albert Broccoli and Harry Salzman are looking to make the Bond franchise. And Dr. No, we talked about, you know, they wanted to do this novel first and they couldn't. So they ended up doing Dr. No because of the legal battle that was going on. So again, this thing keeps coming up and it keeps causing problems for Eon Productions. As we talked about last week, it literally yeah. killed Ian Fleming. Yeah, so a lot of the stress yeah. that was due to this, I mean, of course, Ian Fleming was an avid smoker, and we talked about that, and, you know, he drank a lot and all that, but because of the stress due to these legal proceedings that were going on in, in, well into 1964, from the stress of it, he'd like, he had had a heart attack and all this stuff, and he passed away. Mm -hmm. But what ended up happening, they settled out of court, Fleming got the rights to the novel, 
and then Kevin McClory, and I believe Jack Winningham, but it really just says Kevin McClory got the rights to the movie rights. So this is a problem for Salzman and Broccoli now because now they're like, oh, shit, this guy has the rights to one of the novels. He could literally just take the film rights, go to a competing studio and say, hey, this, you know, that James Bond property, I have the rights to this book. Uh, we can make an, another James Bond and, you know, make a shit ton of money off of it. So they didn't want that to happen. So what they decided to do, they made a deal with them. They said, look, we'll bring you on. You'll be the producer on this movie. Did he actually do anything? Did he McClory did. He do did. I actually, any producing? When I read into it, yeah, it seemed like he did a lot of helping with the location scouting and everything okay. else. So it wasn't like he he was just somebody who's like, I did all this stuff. This is, yeah. I have the right to this movie. Put my name on yeah. that. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like that. I mean, he 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 was still a filmmaker and he still produced this film with Broccoli and Salzman. But, you know, Salzman and Broccoli weren't like, oh, God, we got to deal with this dude. You know, it's another person in the mix when they're already like a team. But the big deal about this whole thing is that in the clause of the agreement, it says, OK, you can make another Thunderball in 10 years. So after this movie comes out, we'll let you make another movie in 10 years. And really, that leaves it off for a story from another time. but. Because of these legal proceedings, for a lot of different reasons, this kind of comes back and haunts the franchise in later installments in the Eon Productions.